Hey everyone, and today we're going to be doing a quick proof of the power rule, so let's just get started. Um, we start by generalizing the power rules. So we know what the power rule is. So let's say we have some function of x, x the n. Then that would mean that f prime of x, or the derivative of x the n, is n times x to the n minus 1. And n is a constant, so it's not like n is a, another function or anything. n is just a, a constant number, a real number. So what do we, what do, we do? I probably should have written this on a... No, I can't do that. I have to, I have to figure out how to move this thing. Uh, yeah, come here. We're going to move this over here. And we're going to go... Oh, can I... There we go. And now we're going to look at an example. So we know the, the the most basic example. We have f of x is equal to x squared. So of course applying this, f prime of x is just 2x. And we can show this, this is how we're going to show this generally, or how we're going to prove it, through um, the limit definition of the derivative. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h all squared minus x squared all over h. What we do now is we're going to expand this out. This will have an x squared term, so of course that and that will cancel. Next terms after that will be 2xh plus h squared, of which we can factor out an h, cancel it with the denominator, and then from there we'll just have 2x plus h, and as h goes to 0, we're left with just 2x, which is obviously our derivative. But that, that's simple, that's easy. What we're going to do is we're going to generalize this for the nth case, or the nth term. So we're going to have the limit as h goes to 0, of this time x plus h to just the nth power, minus x to the n. This will all be over h. So once again, we're going to um, expand this out. Obviously, we can't expand like explicitly because n's, you know, not a number. It's just a dummy variable at this point. But what we will get if we imaginarily expand this out is the limit as h goes to zero. Of we know the first term is going to be x to the n plus. Now I'm going to give some random coefficients, and this is just off basic um, binomial expansion. So it'll be a times x to the n minus one times h plus some other random coefficient b the n minus 2 times h squared and it'll go on and on and on forever until we get to our h to the n of course we will still have this x minus or uh, minus x to the n out front or out back I guess and this will all be over h now once again these terms cancel I'm going to move this over here and, and down so since these two cancel, we're left with just this part here, the a times x to the n minus 1 times h plus bx to the n minus 2 times h squared, on and on and on until h to the n. So once again, we're going to factor an h out. So we'll have the limit as h goes to 0. Well, this time we'll have the h out here, and it'll be a times x to the n minus 1, no h because we factored it out, times b or plus b times x to the n minus 2 times h. We factored out 1h on and on until we get to the h to the n minus 1 because we factored out 1h. This will all be over our denominator of h, which cancels out with our numerator. And what we're left with is... Can I just copy and paste this? I don't want to write that again. Please. Eh? No. Right, whatever, I'll write it out. So this will leave us with our limit. I'll write it up here. We'll have our limit as h still going to 0 of a to the x, or t a times x to the n minus 1, plus b times x to the n minus 2, h, uh, yeah, just h, plus h to the n minus 1. Of course, since now we don't have to worry about h being in the denominator, this will just go away. 
or uh, all the terms with h's multiplying them because they're going to zero and we're left with a times x to the n minus one and this is what our limit equals so, so the limit as h goes to zero will equal this a times x to the n minus one which is remarkably close to what we wanted we wanted n times x to the n minus one so all we really have to do is ascertain what this a coefficient is and in order to do that we'll have to take a look at some binomial expansion so let's do that up here so we have a or uh, yeah x plus h uh, squared this of course is very easy to expand out we have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared now we'll have x plus h cubed which is a little longer and I'm gonna go one more up after this so we'll do x um, plus h to the fourth but this will equal x cubed plus 3 x squared h plus what was it yep 3 that's a terrible 3 x h squared plus h squared sorry not h squared h b h cubed and lastly we'll have x plus h to the fourth this is equal to x the fourth plus 4 x cubed h plus 6 is that right yep 6 x squared and this will have h will go up one more power so it should be h squared yep and then 4 x h cubed and then our last term of just h to the fourth yep so the reason I wrote out all these terms is because of what we have here this a times x to the n minus 1 doesn't have an h that's because we factored it out but the fact that we were able to factor it out and completely remove the h means that that was just an h to the first power so we really only need to look at the second term of all these expansions and what we're looking at at the second term of these is the coefficient itself so we can see that obviously it's you know four uh, the coefficient here is also four three uh, expanding it to the third power coefficient is also three expanding the second power coefficient is also two so automatically we can just say well if it's being expanded to the nth power then this a coefficient will have to be n as shown here but these are just examples and I wanted to go a little more in depth with an actual proof so what we need to look at is the actual binomial expansion sort of formula for getting our coefficients and that is n choose k in this case so we'll have n choose k and while I that is whew, you gotta okay that's uh, a marginally better looking k um, and while I hate combinatorics n choose k is n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial and this is um, our gen the generally the way you find the coefficients of a binomial expansion where n is I believe the power and k is the term you're looking for in this case we're always looking at the second term and what we're concerned with is the power of h because that's how we were able to get this isolated without the h. So the power of h in the second term of all these is just 1. And so k is really just 1. Let me write that down. Or, well, I'll write that k is the um, power or the exponent of h, power of h. In this case, h, since we're only looking at the second term, is just 1. So we will have n factorial choose 1. So that's nice. So we will have n factorial over n minus 1 factorial, and I should say a equals this, a equals, because once again we are looking at the coefficients of a binomial expansion, and this is how you find that, n times 1 factorial, but that, oh, well, we're not doing double factorials, we are doing 1 factorial. Um, 1 factorial is obviously just 1, so it's redundant, but n factorial factorial over n minus 1 factorial can be rewritten. If we were to strip an n out the numerator, we would have n times n minus 1 factorial. That's just how factorials work, over n minus 1 
factorial, of course you could show that, but essentially since n is n factorial is all the integers down from n multiplying by each other, taking one out means you would just have the integer before n taking its factorial and then multiplying it by n to get n factorial. So of course these n factorials cancel out and we're left with just n. Therefore a is just equal to n. So this last term here, we can replace that. So we would have the limit as h goes to 0. And of course all these other terms have disappeared. So we will just have n times x to the n minus 1 which is exactly the power rule. Therefore, our proof is complete. Uh, Q, E, uh, D. Good, good job. Quick, easy, simple proof of the power rule. Of course, you could prove it when um, it is not simply x to the n, but x, uh, some constant c times x to the n, you could prove it for that as well. That's not too difficult, so if you would like to do that, you can. You would largely employ the same method. You would just have to adjust a little bit when calculating the coefficients, but it's nothing too crazy. So yeah, thank you for watching.